I'm Dr. Izumi Sakamoto, Associate Professor at the Factor MNTASH Faculty of Social Work at the University of Toronto. I'm also an academic fellow of the Center for Critical Qualitative Health Research at the University of Toronto. I have been conducting qualitative research for the past 20 years, including using focus groups interviews. Focus group interviews are one of the most common ways of gathering qualitative research data, and it's sometimes called a quick and easy way of conducting research. However, conducting focus groups require quite a bit of planning and thinking. Today, I will be talking to you about focus group research as a qualitative data collection method. First, I will talk about the definition of focus groups. Second, I will talk about research design using focus groups, what you need to consider when using focus groups, such as strength, limitations, and logistics. Third, I will also discuss what group facilitation skills to consider as researchers. According to a focus group guru, David Morgan, focus groups are basically group interviews, but it's different from group interviews because instead of the researcher just asking questions and participants answering them, focus groups rely on the interaction within the group. Focus groups can produce data and insights that would be, would be less accessible without the interaction found in the group. The focus groups have been used since the 1920s, but became more popular in the 1960s. They are often used in market research and evaluation research, but in this talk, I will be focusing on the use of focus group as a qualitative health research method. Focus groups can be used as a standalone method. When I was a doctoral student in the United States, a wife of a Japanese businessman was charged with allegedly killing her infant son. She was suffering from postpartum depression, but did not have anyone to turn to. As an international student living in the US, I wondered what kinds of struggles spouses of international students and visiting scholars may be experiencing in the university family housing, where there were over 1,000 residents from other countries, but had limited services available to them because of their dependent visa status. There were rumors or anecdotes of these families experiencing stress, but there was no real data or information to help them. I applied for small funding and conducted four exploratory focus groups in four different languages to find out more about their experiences. The findings of this small study pointed to the interrelated issues of isolation and the lack of childcare. Based on the findings, a group of us developed community-based services for international families in collaboration with the university and designed a community-based participatory research project to further expand on the first initiative. The focus groups were, the, were used as a starting point of this project and this study continued for an additional four years. We continued working with hundreds of international families. Focus groups can be also used as a part of multi-method study. In a research project I led more recently, my colleagues and I in interested in exploring the tacit assumptions behind the concept of Canadian experience. This concept has been a barrier to employment for new skilled immigrants living in Canada. We conducted interviews where we asked service providers, immigrants, and immig immigration experts what this Canadian experience really meant. But when they couldn't articulate well, even though the term is used so widely, we turned to the use of arts and subsequently conducted seven arts-based focus groups with a theater specialist who helped us design the use of arts in focus groups. As part of the larger study, the data from the focus groups then were analyzed in addition to other data we had from in-depth interviews and participant observation. The research findings were then turned into a theater production. Focus groups allowed participants and researchers together to brainstorm and solidify the meaning of Canadian experience. Again, we couldn't have done that. Turn into the deeper meaning of the topic under study without the power of focus groups. 
As you can see, a focus group method can be used in many different ways, and it's a versatile tool to have in your qualitative research toolbox. So why should we consider using focus groups? Focus groups can produce concentrated amounts of data on the very topic you're interested in. Focus groups can lead to spontaneous responses because of group interactions. Researchers can observe non-verbal behaviors and interaction patterns in the group settings. Also, focus groups can generate a variety of ideas and thus is considered economical and efficient. Focus group is flexible and allows for the use of arts, for example. Then what about the limitations of focus groups? While the strength of the focus group have to do with the groups, the limitations also have to do with the group. Groups influence on individual responses mean that researchers have less control over the data than they would in individual interviews. Group dynamics could influence individual answers due to power differentials, prior relationships, and personality. People may be emotionally triggered by others sharing. People may not feel comfortable speaking about certain topics such as mental health issues or sexual behaviors in group settings. Assembling groups can take time and resources. Also, you need to have a strong group facilitator to conduct an effective focus group. There are also limits to confidentiality. Researchers con uh, cannot guarantee Researchers cannot guarantee that the confidentiality can be kept by all the participants. It's particularly important to consider this when the topics discussed may include highly stigmatized identities or behaviors, such as invisible stigma of HIV positive status or criminalized activities. Once you establish that focus groups are the best data collection method for your particular research purposes, you will start designing the specifics of running focus groups. From the main research questions, you would develop a focus group interview guide, which usually consists of main questions and follow-up questions for each. The number of questions you would ask may vary, but if you have 90 minutes in total for the entire focus group, you may have four to five main questions to allow for the group. Group interactions, for example, in the research study with Chinese skilled immigrants, we asked questions such as, has your life changed since you came to Canada? If so, how? When you were experiencing difficulty, what, has helped, what was helpful for you? What advice would you give to newcomers, in, uh, newcomers now? It's a good idea to have a mock focus group with research team members or friends so that you can test out actual questions and modify them if necessary. If it's the first time you are using focus group method, it's very important that you practice running a focus group before you actually do one or become a co-facilitator of a focus group that somebody else is running so that you know what to expect. In designing focus groups, you would also need to consider group structure and composition. With respect to structure, you want to consider things such as where and when to hold a group. Usually, usually the researcher beca becomes the facilitator of the focus group, but depending on the de demographics of the group members, you may want to have somebody else run it. Also, you may want to consider having a co-facilitator, observer, or note taker to help with the group. You also want to think about who you want in your group and why. For example, you don't want to have workers and supervisors in the same group. This would mean developing a set, set of inclusion criteria. For example, in my previous research using arts I mentioned earlier, I wanted to recruit skilled immigrants who have arrived in Canada recently and were attending employment services, as well as the mentors who are working with them. In composing actual focus groups, logistics such as the time of the day or the day of the week or location could dictate who can come. But as much as possible, it's also good to consider the group composition. If relevant, avoid somebody being the only one 
participant. Only one participant from the known minority group, such as one trans person and seven cisgendered individuals in the same group. However, you'd also consider intersecting identities and experiences. The gender identity or racial or ethnic identity may not be the main similarities or differences among people. So you have to consider both heterogeneity, homogeneity, diversity, and commonality among people composing focus groups. Other logistics to consider include the physical location of meeting, such as the room size, not too big or not too small, chairs, are they comfortable? Not in a lecture hall with fixed chairs because you want to sit in a circle. Also, you may want to consider settings, uh, confidentiality and noise levels. Probably it's not a good idea to have a group in a cafe or other open public space. Also, it's important to consider the accessibility to members, location in community, and transportation issues. It usually helps to have some refreshments like water, coffee, or tea, and it's important to have accessible bathrooms. If you're working with a population with financial challenges, it's important to ensure having childcare, transit tokens, and or honorarium. You may also consider providing an interpreter if some people may not speak a common language or find a skilled group facilitator who can speak the language for a single language group. Focus group can start with introductions. You may want to give an option for the participants to use pseudonyms if the topics discussed are sensitive. For focus groups that will be two hours long, Consider having about five main questions so that you can sp spend about 20 minutes each per question. This could vary by the nature of questions, the group composition, and other variables. You should also leave some time in at the end to finish the group on a positive note. For example, I may ask each participant to say or write a word or phrase to describe how their experience was. Don't forget to thank them for their participation at the end. With respect to group facilitators, their main tasks are to keep the discussion focused on the topic and help people feel as comfortable as possible in answering questions. Facilitators should also clarify when some, something seems confusing. When posing questions, it's a good idea to move from general to specific questions and avoid leading questions. You should watch out for non-verbal behaviors in this regard, having a co-facilitator or observer is helpful. In running focus groups, it's helpful to have group guidelines for productive discussion. This is an example I have used. Set own boundaries for sharing. Only one person talks at a time. Respect confidentiality. Keep the personal information shared in the group within the room. Speak from your own experience and avoid generalizing about groups of people. Anything someone wants to say is important. There are no right or wrong answers to questions. The goal really is to hear all sides of an issue, both positive and negative. Before ending, I want to also touch on the variations in focus groups. Focus groups are often used in community-based participatory research, or CBPR. In CBPR, there are often goals of empowering those affected by the social issues under study and moving toward social change using research. By using focus groups, researchers can take advantage of the power of groups. For example, participants who experience similar social issues may feel that they are not alone in their struggles. They may feel hopeful. They may feel the sense of catharsis and they may receive helpful information. Focus groups can be run electronically or online using chat rooms, discussion boards, video conferencing, and social media platforms. This could address some of the logistical issues of traditional focus groups. However, researchers need to consider unique ethical issues such as confidentiality and informed consent process when using these methods. I hope through this lecture, uh, I was able to pique your interest in learning more about focus groups. 
There are some further readings at the end of this video that I have found useful. Once again, I am Dr. Izumi Sakamoto and thank you for watching.